now uh, some of you knows us, you know us since a long time and so I have not to explain but uh, this time we have a lot of newcomers and so give me the permission to let us uh, to let you know who we are the Danube networkers and I ask Leonard to share screen yes uh, Danube Networkers is, as I said, an uh, informal uh, learning network and it's existing since 2008. And uh, we came from the bottom up. It was in the initiative of uh, the Educational Institute at Ulm University and uh, in strong cooperation with this group of seniors. Uh, reflecting that we have the Danube, that we have a lot of Danube activities coming from town, politics and economy, but not civil society was engaged and connected. And so we tried to step up something. And uh, you see the Danube, and we are uh, based on encounters and projects along the Danube and now including uh, organizations and citizens from all countries. Our aim is to foster lifelong learning, social participation and intergenerational dialogue in the Danube region and in the whole of Europe. And now more than 100 civil society organizations from the fields of education, culture, social affairs, environment, and furthermore, universities and schools from 10 Danube countries are part of this educational network. And in 2014, we founded the International Association Danube Networkers for Europe called DANET. Our mission statement, to be international, intergenerational and inclusive. We organize encounters and common projects in the Danube region with intention of fostering international understanding, supporting the civil society in the Danube countries and creating sustainable networks. We, de we de develop uh, new methods for different target groups by action research and invite citizens of all age to participate. Our motto is learning together, working together, helping together and celebrating together. This is also very important. You find more on our website. And our three levels of actions are, and this with head, heart and hand, as I said, projects, but also qualification seminaries for educators and to involve us in politics. Just one or uh, three examples for the projects we do. The first very well known along the Danube was the Wanted Danube. Uh, 6,000 participants from eight Danube countries created a band, a band of a ribbon of friendship created by, based on wool. It was not new wool, it was wool we had all in our households and it was so fine to see that everybody brought in and at the end from this uh, uh, ribbon we uh, made hand knitted Danube river pieces and we had 3649 coming from everywhere and we made a performance on the place of the Ulm Cathedral to make known the Danube the different countries and also towns and it was really amazing and it was also amazing that in Ulm, we uh, gave these pieces for a donation. And then we collected 20,000 euro for to give um, for projects in the Southeast of Europe, for projects you needed a, a little support. Another big and well-known um, project was Taste of Danube Bread Connects. And it was so really um, touching to see that bread, which is a fundamental food of life for all, us, all of us, connect us also in religion, in culture, and in all countries, we 
got so a lot of inputs and we made baking activities, research, interviews, qualification and conferences and so on. And we, had, we have always a competition or a campaign. And so we involved so a lot of people and we learned so a lot of each other. This is our principle to come to those who have to give something. And finally, everybody has to give something and to exchange and to reflect diversity, diversity in United, in unity, in United Europe. Our big challenge in all this network are not the work, are not the feelings. A big challenge is we have no common language. It's a bigger problem as normally people think. Because in international encounters, always English is the language of uh, commitment. When you are in these countries, they learned other languages. They have other native languages and they learned uh, Russian. And, but also in Germany, there are a lot of people not speaking English. And so uh, this is always a big challenge. And uh, we developed with a group of seniors, by example, an app. It's an app you can use online, but what is more important also offline to make small conversations wherever you are in villages in these countries also when they are coming to us here by us. Small sentences just to make known we are interested in you, we would like to know how you are and so give a little sign. I think this is so important for our work in civil society not the big speeches but to give signs and this is one of the signs we gave and we give we would like to overcome the language barriers and to be together and so we tried also today by online and so we try today also to have this translation i hope it will function but we we think it will be mm -hmm. but uh, we have also a new project and this is very interesting and I invite you to come and to look in our website. It's CodaNet, Connecting the New Neighbors by Culture. My personal intangible cultural treasure. People reflect and they share personal treasures with others and they learn about intangible treasures of others and we can compare. And by this way, we learn also to handle useful applications of internet. This is very important because uh, older persons have a lot of shy and a lot of uh, restrictions. And so um, we try by learning, by doing, but based on themes of interest to bring them in. And we learn so a lot of uh, the different cultures and it's very interesting to see the big, uh, how to say, if first they do, to present what is very um, important for themselves, for, them, for all of them. Mm -hmm. We make qualification seminaries, practical ones, but also trainings for how to do a European draft. This is one of the horrible <laughs> things we can imagine, so difficult, but a lot of other things. And uh, you can find one of our um, results uh, in the method toolbox because in one of our latest projects we um, made with nine partners an analysis of best practice projects and methods which should inspire organizations and educators to implement methods which foster European awareness. And it's explained step by step how to do it and how you can uh, transfer it. I think we need more such, uh, such useful tools. In politics, since the beginning, we are involved in the Danube strategy and uh, Danube network workers in 2011 made the first paper and uh, asking in the Danube strategy more space for civil society and especially for elderly one. <laughs> we got some awards. And this was, I show it to you not only because we are proud of them, but also to say these awards have connected us also in another way. 
when we got the award of the European Parliament in 2015, it was we had a prize, we got a prize, and this we is so important. It's not me or the institutions, we all got it for the Wanted Danube, when it was the same for the prize of the uh, European Commission of Economy and Social Affairs. Uh, this we, we have to foster the we by doing, but also by making us known and be honored for this. Now, Corona affects us all. And we decided, as Mr. Weber said, physical distance doesn't mean social distance. And we uh, used all possible tools we, which seems, seemed useful for us to make experience, to cooperate in our projects. We make uh, weekly uh, cultural sessions uh, from friends to friends and everybody is invited to bring in what he or she can do, a song, a music piece, a presentation. And if you go on our website, you will see there are a lot of very interesting contributions from uh, citizens from all these countries, but also from friends from Italy, from France, and from Great Britain. Our network will be wider and wider. We make uh, conferences to uh, develop the pro project, project management in the DENTA project by virtual sessions, but we make also qualifications for learners, learning on the job, to make interviews and to revise the text and to discuss with um, journalists and so on. So we have a lot of really good possibilities to learn and to learn with these new tools and by these new tools. And we created self-organized group, international groups, for example, uh, an English uh, conversation course is given by a um, very nice colleague of us, Stan Miller, and uh, people from Germany or from Bulgaria, a mixed group, uh, activating English or French or Italian in other groups. This is also a new possibility we find out. And so, perhaps, uh, Corona is terrible, but nevertheless, it brought us a little bit more together than we uh, thought on, uh, at the beginning, or as it has been the case. And this is the reason why we invite you to this online conference, Sharing Beyond Borders, New Ways of Care, Communication and Cooperation of Older People along the Danube and in Europe in time of COVID-19, to exchange experiences, to work together, to develop new ideas, and to take responsibility. Responsibility for a peaceful and sustainable Europe based on common values. I have to say, our world is not changing completely now because of Corona. Demographic changes, globalization, migration, rapid changes in science and technology have started in the 20th century. But Corona was a break. And this break was focusing a lot of things and make us see a lot of problems and a lot of challenge in our world full of transformation. Older persons are not a unique group. There are a big variety of personalities and life conditions. Elderly, a part of them, need care. A lot of older people of different ages, between 60 and 100, they are going on well and they need communication and activities to prevent loneliness. So let us speak today about a lot of common challenges in different parts of social life, education and culture. Surely not all things will be touched, but let us see this conference as a start of communication about, and let us continue in real meetings and by online. This event would not have been possible without the support of the State Ministry, and so we thank a lot, Mrs. Shopper and the State Ministry, for giving us this help. I greet by my heart and thank a lot to Mrs. Gabriel, to Mrs. Chopper and to Mr. Lambert 
for the political analysis and visions in time of Corona, we will have in some minutes. I thank Professor Stoilova and Professor Morenkopf for the thematic lectures with topics with big, of in big importance. And these topics will be a crossover issue in all our workshops. I thank a lot to all speakers to share with us their experience and visions. I thank to my wonderful Eloy team who worked so hard in the last three months. And I thank and welcome all participants coming from far away to be near with us by online, to be socially connected with us, even if physical distance is needed. I wish you all a good conference, an inspiring conference. We are very keen to learn a lot from you and to share with you a lot, not only um, experiences, but also to share visions and to think about how we can realize these visions. Thank you and have a good day.